Hi and welcome to the first in a series of videos from us at Motorsport Electronics showing the integrated tuning environment that we're developing uh, to support our new engine management system, the NE442 core. The software is in a very early release stage, so it's not pretty, but it does work, and it is something you know we're putting out there. These videos, especially the feedback, the things people would like to see, changes they'd like to see made, and of course, you know, any feedback you know we can try and implement now at the design stage rather than uh, afterwards in a, in a release stage. So first things first, it is connected. The PC here is connected via USB to an ME442 board, so everything here is working. So we've been working on the comms, getting things layered and working between each other, because of course the ME442 differs from other ECUs. It doesn't have fixed tables and fixed structures within the controller. The user can create their own tables, their own input mappings, output mappings, and the links and relationships between these tables and these processing chains, such that any control configuration system can be created. So you can run a diesel engine, a rotary engine, you could, you know, as I say to some some people, change the angle of a spoiler based on the colour of the sky. If you had the right sensors and the right actuators, you could do anything you want with this controller. So let's go ahead and, and, and run the, the software and like I say it is in a very initial state. So if we press start here on, on our development environment, you can see here straight away it picks it up via USB. So it picks up the controller on the COM port and gives us the option to connect and of course we're going to say yes. So right now on the screen here you can see we have a tree view on the left which details the variables that we have defined within our ECU and we have some tabs that we've we pre-programmed. Now the typical user will just use these pre-programmed tabs and it will look neater, there will be more menu options obviously when it's finished, but there will be a fuel tab, an ignition tab, and a boost controller tab and some, some other bits and bobs. So the ECU from an initial point of view will function very similar with a very similar set of features that we'll program in like an OMX 600 ECU or something of that nature. And the actual behind the scenes way of doing this to create new tables and tabs currently it is done through an XML file so here you can see we've added uh, different models to the data link we've added a coolant table here for example which takes an input from ADC uh, it tells it the channel, the input link number that it comes from, it's the table's type, it's a 16 by 1 table and the categories of which it should fall under and so on so you know right now you can go ahead and create new tables and new links but we will be aiming to have this all supported by a flowchart system so you'll be able to draw this this layout and these links within the mighty you'll be able to say i want a an input here a link to this table then link to this table and then synchronized at this angle based on this module of the crank timing system so there's complete flexibility but uh, let's go ahead and just show you some of the widgets we've already implemented so first of all we click on the fuel map tab, this loads up uh, some example widgets that we've done. So first of all you've got the, the 1D table. Now tables are movable and draggable and placeable on the screen and they're also resizable by dragging and dropping. So here you can see the 1D table. This takes an input axis and it gives an output variable based on, on, on the other cells here. So let's go through this 1D widget first of all. So first of all we can drag and drop and change things and you can see that the grid data is updated in real time to reflect the, the visual representation of that data. You'll also notice this green and red box around the edge here that seems to be flashing. This is telling us it's actually writing and updating in real time. And when it turns green it means that the data that we're showing is updated live to the ECU. You can see here there's a, there's a bug here we're working on which is where the left hand axis is displayed correctly. It's something we're working on. It's nothing to worry about at the moment. And the again we can we can size and scale things to suit. So if you wanted to change, you can you can change numerically. You can enter in numeric data here, and that will drop all the way off the axis there, which is completely normal as we're going to expect. Or you can change things in a in a uh, in, in a graphical sense by dragging and dropping these dots. You can also change these axes. So here we have 25. We might want to change that to say to say 27. So double clicking, entering 27. And you can see that's updated in real time. You could probably change it to 10 if you wanted to. And you can see it's changed in real time. So that's the, the 1D widget. So of course, any table you create as a 1G 1D table will be defined and displayed as this widget type. So clicking on it on this left hand, the, this left hand tree here, you'll be able to bring up this table. And of course, as I say, this will be changed slightly. That the layout and the colours will be changed slightly. Um, such that you can make it more easy and easier to see. Okay, so moving across to the second widget type, we have the 2D data view. Now, people might call this a 3D table. It, it is 
it's two dimensional as an array, but it is three dimensional data representation. So you have two input axes and one output axis, so one output data set. So here you can see, for example, this would be an RPM times by perhaps mass airflow in grams per second, again defined by the user. Axis labels are going to be added. Uh, they're not added yet, but they will be. And the table is coloured based on the value. So one value that's very high up the range would be red, towards the bottom of the range here, for example, blue. And middle numbers, you can see, are, are two different shades of green, and, and the shades change change respectively. You can also view it as a 3D view by clicking on 3D view, and this lets you view it as a 3D table, which you can drag around, see the value of points, and so on. Okay, so um, a couple of things you can select multiple cells, and by pressing the Q or W keys, you can increment and decrement those cells' data. And again, you'll see the red and green border illustrating that. In fact, yes, that data has been sent in real time to the ECU. So we'll move that one out of the way. The next widget we have is a driver or a parameter widget. Now, the stuff in here, in an engine management terms, doesn't make any sense. We've got dwell, node mode, and stuff like that. It doesn't matter. The fact is, this is created in a, a, a runtime based on the XML file and based on the, the tables and links in the ECU. So you might have, for example, a boost control driver where you could set the, the minimum percent for the drive for the for the boost control solenoid, the PID values for it, um, the input channels you're going to use. For example, here we can see that ADC1, which is an input pin on the actual ME442, we've set it to a to, to, to point as a to, as a value as a variable called coolant raw with the variable ID of 107. And these IDs are automatically populated, so that's not a problem. But it's named coolant raw. And we can then bring up, in this case, a HRT table. All ADCs have what's called an HRT, and that's a human representation transformation table. And what that means is coolant raw, which is an ADC number from 0 to 65 odd thousand, can then be displayed in a 1D table to show the, the input to the output in degree centigrade. So that would then be output as coolant temperature degree C variable, for example, which in this coolant correction table we have here, would then be its input. So we can actually specify that this table of coolant correction takes its input from coolant temperature degree C and outputs a scalar variable from, from 0 to, for example, here uh, in percent. And that can then have a modifier if the link is there on the injection table. So you then have a crank enrichment table. It's quite complex to explain, but once the table, once it's there and displayed as a flowchart, it'll be very easy to navigate and very easy to interact with. And of course, like I say, the, the basic ECU will, when, when we when we when we deploy an ME442 package, it will contain a basic OMIC 600 type table set. So we'll have the warm-up tables, the crank tables, and so on.